In this lesson, we will cover financial periods. Now, a financial period is usually a period of 12 months by which a business prepares its financial statements. And the financial statements comprise of the income statement and the balance sheet. Now let's have a look at the following. A business starts trading at 1 January 2018. And after the 12 months, the business needs to prepare its financial statements. So the first month will be January, the second month will be February, the third month will be March and so forth until you come to the last month which is December. So we start at 1 January 2018 and then the period will end at 31 December 2018. This business starts trading on the 1st of March 2019. Now after 12 months it needs to prepare its financial statements but now what is the end date? Now we can work this out by the following. We can say the 1st of March 2019 is our start date and March month being our first month. Then we can go and say the second month will be April, the third month will be May, the fourth month will be June and so forth until we arrive at the 12th month which is February 2020 and that will be our end date. When we are working with financial statements, it's important that we can determine the year beginning and the year ending because not all companies will have a financial beginning of 1 January and a ending of 31 December. So there's a simple method for us in order to determine the year beginning from the year ending date. Let's have a look at a few examples. Here we have a trial balance extract of Marx Trading as at 31 July 2017. Now the year end is the 31 July 2017. We now need to determine what is the year beginning. Now how do we do that? We do that by changing three elements in the date. We change the day, we change the month and we change the year. The first element is the day of the month. We change that to 1. So 31 becomes 1. The second element is we change the month to the next month. Now what's the next month of July? That is August. And the third element is we change the year. And we change the year from this year to last year. So the previous year of 2017 was 2016. Let's have a look at another example. Over here is a trial balance extract and the year ending is 30 September 2016. Now let's go ahead and apply the same method. The day we change to 1, so 30 we will change to 1. The month we will change to the next month. So the next month of September is October and for the year we will change 2016 to the previous year which is 2015. So by using this technique you don't have to write everything out in order to determine the year beginning. Our last example is a trial balance extract as at 31 May 2018. Now again, the year end is 31 May 2018. Let's apply our method. So the 31, we will change to 1 for the month of May. We change that to the next month. So after May comes June. And for our year, we will go back to the previous year. We will change 2018 to 2017. So that will be our year beginning. So now that we know this, it's important for us to report in our financial statements for the 12 months only. So our income and our expenses will be entered in our financial statements for the 12 months only. 
Now you might ask why is this? This is because of two principles. It's the matching principle and the accrual principle which we learned in previous videos. Now take a look at this example. Say a business starts trading 1 January 2018 and it ends 31 December 2018. That means that its income and expenses will only be entered in that period of 2018. The previous year of 2017's information will not be entered, neither the following year's information of 2019 will also not be entered in the current year's financial statements. Another example can be that the business starts trading on 1 March 2018, therefore its ending period will be 28 February 2019. So only the income and the expenses for that period is entered in the financial statements. And this will range from the 1st of March 2018 until the 28th of February 2019. The income and the expenses for January 2018 and February 2018 will not be entered because it does not form part of the current financial period. Also, the income and expenses for March, April and May and going onwards will also not be entered into the financial statements because it does not form part of the current financial period. Now, how do we account? For those expenses and income. We do that by making adjustments and adjustments will be covered in the next video.